Welcome, I am Hafid and Insidium just added new project examples to their new content repository library and they look awesome. I think that they're based to showcase some of the new features that came out with the updates and I was waiting on something like this. Once again, I want you to think of this video as an unboxing, so this is my first reaction to opening up these project samples and my goal is to understand how they were made so I can apply those principles to my professional work. This is not a tutorial nor a master course, but me just wanted to learn more about X Particles, which is a plugin for simulations for Cinema 4D. I encourage you greatly to buy it or subscribe to them, especially if you're a student, because you can get a huge discount if you have the Cinema 4D educational version, which if you're a student, you can get for free. Now this is how I got into Cinema 4D, I applied through their website, they gave me the free software as long as I was a full time student, and then X Particles gave me a discount if I had that Cinema 4D educational license. So now that I graduated, I cannot verify that I'm a student anymore, so that license is worthless. But I like Cinema 4D and X Particles both so much that I'm investing my time and my money in them. But let's get with the video, less talking and more doing, so let's go. And in this video, I have decided to go over the Sticky Constraints example. Now I'm gonna start right right away and just play it through and we can see that effect now I can already kind of tell that this is just emitting particles that are constrained and attached to each other and that's what gives it that sticky effect I think it looks really cool and I really want to understand how they are doing this so I'm gonna go right ahead and start learning and deactivating everything and just playing around to just get it a better understanding so i'm gonna go back in the timeline and i'm just gonna deactivate the lights i'm gonna open the xp system and then just go off of the camera by clicking on this white square i'm gonna hide the camera on the viewport and also the xp logo now we have one emitter we have a couple generators we have some utilities and modifiers. So just like previous videos, I'm going to deactivate all of those and just start with the emitter. Also take off all the, the dynamics. I'm going to start simply with the emitter. So I'm going to play it. And it seems like the constraints are still active. So let me take it off. There we go. So what this is, it's just a circle shaped emitter that is emitting from the ring only. If we, can, if we deactivate that, it's going to emit from inside and outside of that ring. But they're only doing it from the ring of, from the actual shape, from the actual spline of this. And you see it's just like spitting outwards. Now I can see that some are spitting they're, they're, they're different colors and some are spinning faster than the others. So I'm gonna go to emission and I can, I can see that it's a rate emission. The birth rate is 746. The speed is at 173 with variation of 173. So you're gonna have some particles that are not moving and some particles are gonna be moving twice as fast as this speed. Now the particle size is pretty much the same as uniform, it's on, it's on two, and that's pretty much it for the emitter. It's just emitting those particles. Next, I'm just gonna activate those constraints, play it again, and we can already see that web being created by those constraints. And now it's kind of pulling it, that's a really cool effect. And it's just keeping those particles together. It doesn't let them go too far, and it pulls them back in. So let me click on that and see what it's working on. So it's connecting them at birth, with the stiffness of 11 there's a limit of 3 radius 34 and it will break if it's if the radius is above 65 centimeters but they're not going that far i believe well some of them are i think one of you just flew off there it is right there but yeah um let's let's just reduce that to 10 just so we can have even numbers 35 all right now is there anything in collisions no collisions no forces no viscosity either interesting i would think that since this is like a fluid that's really sticky you will have some kind of viscosity and friction and surface tension <laughs> they don't have any of that so that's that's really interesting so that's it with the constraints i'm gonna minimize it it's still active minimize the emitter 
I'm gonna go ahead to the modifiers. I like to see the generators at the end just because sometimes they'll be creating some really expensive meshes. So I'm gonna activate the modifiers and deactivate gravity and just start with the XP sticky, which I haven't tried before. So it's enabled, there's an independent probability. Okay, outside only, sticky time 60 frames. Okay. And it seems to be that this XP join is an object that you can input in here. So let me go ahead and open that one up. And I've never seen this before. Where does this XP join come from? So we have that XP join um, utilities object and then we have four spheres, which are five spheres, which is the ones that we have over here. I'm going to see, change probably the geometry of all of the spheres. So click on them, drag, shift. I'm just going to make an icosahedron so, just so they're more even and I'm going to increase this to 64. I just want the spheres to be really smooth and I'm just going to organize this because it's messing with my OCD. Okay, so they all have the same material. We'll probably change that and they have a vibration tag which this is basically just animating either constantly or in a relative speed. The position at a certain frequency and they activate the rotation. So the position and the rotation are slightly being moved so let, let's see that you see they're only moving on x and y so th they should label these because this, this is always x y and c x y and c so the position is moving on x a little bit and on y a little bit are they yeah you see moving back and forth moving up and down and what i assume that this xp join is is similar to the connect object here in the cinema 4d objects so let me minimize that and i'm gonna activate the gravity which I am sure is just going to bring those particles down. So I'm going to activate it, go back. Yep, and it's just bringing all of that back down. And I'm pretty sure that that is the skeleton of our whole simulation. Just those particles emitting, coming down, sticking to each other because of the constraints and i think that this xp sticky is similar to adding a friction to which in this case will be the objects which is the xp join which is the spheres and i assume that that way you don't need a collision tag on, on all the spheres and then add the friction but then you can just confirm that with me in the comments if you know a little bit more about this. But that is pretty much the skeleton of the simulation. It's just coming down once they get sticking to each other. So let me pause that. And the next step is going to be activating the generators. So let me go ahead and activate the generators and only activate. And I'm going to activate the XP trail. Why do we need the XP trail? I don't know why we need this trail if those particles. Oh, okay. okay. So what this XP trail is going to do is use the emitter. And and create lines that trail the motion of the particles and they added a cycles for the curve just to play around more with the size and the curve and the thickness of the lines i think this is similar to octane's render hair tag kind of like that so they actually have two obd measure trails one is high res, one is low res. I'm gonna go ahead and activate the high res, save it, and then I'm gonna try to play it to see how high quality it is. And yes, it's running pretty slow already. And what I'm gonna do is actually just cache this so I don't have to deal with just going back and forward and waiting for it to like re-simulate every time I press play. So I'm gonna go to utilities, click on utilities. For some reason you cannot see the menu, but click on XP cache. It's gonna bring out this cache object. And what I like to do is select the cache type to external files and just create a separate folder where you are saving this file. So I'm gonna click here, create a folder, and I'm just gonna click on build cache and just let it compute all of that. Okay, so it took around 13 minutes to catch the whole simulation. It might be different with your system, but you can look at my computer specs down in the description. Now it's telling us that it cached these objects, the emitter, the OBD measure and high res and the XP trail. So now we can go ahead and go to those specific objects and they're gonna have a cache tag on them. Meaning that all that information, it's already simulated and it doesn't have to be created every time we press play on the timeline and you can already see that it's running a little bit smoother now the trick about this is that I can go back 
and it's still gonna maintain its form and if we didn't cast the simulation all the particles and everything would just like explode and just go everywhere but since it's cast we can go back and forth at any spot and that information is already stored now if I try to play it it might still struggle and I don't know why because it's already cached but it doesn't matter because I already know that you know it's it's fully working and everything is just working how it's supposed to be and yes that's pretty much it for this simulation once again it's the emitter it's emitting those particles on that ring and then it's bringing those particles together with the constraints no surface tension no friction no viscosity which surprises me it's it's purely just the constraints they're connected at birth they have a certain stiffness and all that kind of stuff now in order for the rendering to see those particles and see those lines and that gooey mesh we need the xp trail to trail the movement of those particles now with that xp trail we can take the ovd measure and put that xp trail use those lines to create the mesh that is going to be our our viscous liquid now this is what the rendering is going to see you can make it see the xp trail and the particles but what we're looking for is for that gooey mesh so now it's time to open the real time preview so i'm just going to pick a spot on the timeline zoom in a little bit and reduce the samples to around 10 to start with and i'm going to press play and we don't see nothing because at the beginning we deactivated the lighting and i'm going to just bring it back on and you can already see that it looks just like the example that they gave us and let's try to play it on real time just so we can see sort of what it's becoming. And this effect looks really, really cool. Now we cannot see the rest of the simulation, so I'm just gonna change the size of where we're gonna export this at. So I'm gonna go to settings, and this is gonna be on the social media, so I'm probably just gonna do this as a 1080 by a 1350, which I know it is to be the highest or the tallest post that you can create on Instagram. Now I'm gonna create the frame range to be all the frames, 300 frames, and then I'm gonna go, for this composition, I'm actually gonna do Octane Render. Click on Ignore and Use Materials, use the Noise Beauty Pass, and use all the GPUs. Close that, close Cycles 4D, and I'm gonna start Octane Render. Now, the reason that I wanna do an Octane is because I already have a lot of materials that are built to work with this rendering system. And if you wanna know which materials I use, I'll leave a link down in the description. But at this point, the simulation is done. I'm just going to frame my work and start playing with the colors and the materials. Alright, so these are the materials that I ended up using for the composition. And I really like this color scheme of gold and pastel purple. Along with the fluorescent liquid, I just think that it balances pretty well. So I'm probably going to render these at 1024 passes each. They are set for path tracing. And I'm also going to add the denoising feature just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so you can find this final animation in my Instagram page along with all of my other work in my other accounts and just let me know if you have any comments or suggestions and that's it